Hi, I'm Carl Azus. On last Thursday's show at CNN10.com, we reported on some of the reasons for a worsening crisis in Venezuela. Today on CNN10, we're looking at some of the effects it's having on the South American nation. Countries around the world are taking sides on what's happening here. After a Venezuelan lawmaker named Juan Guaido declared himself to be the new temporary leader of his country, the U.S. said it would support him. A growing number of other countries like Argentina, Australia, Brazil, Britain, Canada, and Chile have done the same thing. Additional European leaders have said they'd also support Guaido if Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro doesn't schedule free elections soon. But President Maduro said nobody gives Venezuela an ultimatum and that his country had held elections, which he says he won. He accuses the U.S. of setting up a coup to remove him from power. And China, Cuba, and Russia are among the countries who put their support behind Maduro. Yesterday, the United States announced new sanctions or penalties on the South American country to increase the pressure on its embattled leader. Some Venezuelans have rallied behind President Maduro, but many others have protested against him. And more demonstrations are scheduled this week. The people caught in the middle are suffering. Cross into Venezuela's unending disaster, the world's worst growing refugee crisis. And it's like the world, as you know it, is slowly ending. Oil once made them the richest in South America, but this is now the line for three days and nights to get a full tank. In the capital, there's a queue for everything, everywhere. Hunger breeds a special kind of anger. This is how hyperinflation works. These groceries cost $50 an hour, but because of what's happening with the local currency, they'll be worth double, at least by next month. People pay tomorrow's prices today. There's no queuing for the youngest living off what, even here, nobody wants. This isn't play, it's practice for self-defense. My brother got killed in July by another gang, says 14-year-old Uzmaria. They found the body in the river. We gather stuff, we beg, a piece of chicken skin to take home. In a socialist utopia that now leaves nearly every stomach empty. This was the day when change was meant to come. Hundreds of thousands flooding central Caracas, watching opposition leader Juan Guaido swear himself in as interim president. But it fast turned sour. They've had this standoff outside the military airfield here for months. But this is the first time with an opposition leader claiming the presidency. All eyes were on the army and whether it too would rise up. This is the important question really in the standoff. It's about the military's vote. They may be throwing stones at them here, but what they really need is the army to switch sides. That didn't happen. And the police tear gas and motorcycle charges sent us fleeing down side streets. Yes, 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 for no. Some likely wounded although dozens reported dead during the day. It was up here in the normally loyal slums where the fight was nastiest. Special forces entered these streets. They've been coming back to make arrests all during the afternoon when we're invited to meet Carolina's extended family where Maduro's base has long lived. State handouts bought their loyalty for years. But now this is all she has to feed for this day. And they say now they too want Maduro gone. We can't hold it in anymore, one of her cousins says. We're being crushed. We're beggars now, always begging. This isn't political, it's survival. People are killing each other for a kilo of rice, for water. And as Washington says Maduro isn't president, but Moscow insists he is, everyone else walks zombie-like further and closer towards starvation. Nick Payton Walsh, CNN, Caracas. 10-second trivia. Which of these international events is held every five years? World Expo, Winter Olympics, World Mining Congress, or World Cup? Also known as the World's Fair, the World Expo is held every five years and it lasts for months. 
It's a massive event. It's a chance for the country that hosts it to attract attention and investment. And it's a chance for exhibitors from around the world to show off what they've created. The typewriter, telephone and television broadcast, the Statue of Liberty and the Ferris wheel, the x-ray machine and the ice cream cone, all of them exhibited at World Expos. That's why Dubai in the United Arab Emirates has great expectations for Expo 2020. A giant construction site in the middle of the desert. An ambitious project taking shape. Two years from now, this location is set to become one of Dubai's greatest endeavors so far, the World Expo 2020. This is the biggest I will be doing in my life. Ahmed Al Khatib drives us around this massive site. He's keen to show off every corner of it. Right now, we have 23,000 workers working on site. We have about 45 uh, tower cranes. Also, we have moved around 5 million cubic meters of sand. Dubai is building its expo from scratch. Everything from pipelines to pavilions, streets to a metro station. And at around 5 square kilometers in size, it's a huge feat with a lot at stake. It is a big challenge because we have a fixed deadline for us to finish our construction, all of it by October 2019. This is one year before the event starts. Everybody is working towards one single goal, is how to make this project as successful as possible. Putting on a successful expo is a top priority for Dubai. It'll be the first held in the Middle East, Africa, and South Asia region, expected to attract 25 million visitors, with around 180 countries set to participate. It's hoped the event will be a big boost for the economy. Redirecting Dubai's economy, not an easy task. And it may take more than just a six-month event to make it happen. With the project of this scale, usually the focus is on getting all the work done before the event begins. But in this case, officials suggest they've given an equal amount of attention and resources to what happens after the expo finishes in April 2021. The wonderful thing about building the city that it's going to live on after expo. So it's not done on a temporary basis. So it's something that you will see in the future. Marjan Faradouni is looking forward to the expo and equally to what comes after. We know what's going to happen the moment the doors close after the expo and um, you know that was as a result of the direction and the, the vision of our leadership and the instruction that we were given to really think very carefully about every single investment that we're making in the city. The plan is called District 2020, a ready-built community, business and tech hub. The expo site is said to be transformed. In its place, more than 65,000 square meters of residential space, education facilities, and parkland, as well as 140,000 square meters for commercial development. German industrial giant Siemens has already agreed to build a new logistics hub here. We hope that we attract people from the UAE, but also from around the world to make this a successful innovation district in the future. The Expo theme is connecting minds, creating the future. With District 2020 on the horizon, it may just practice what it preaches. John Defterius, CNN, Dubai. A sheep recently wandered into a neighborhood in South Carolina, so a policeman came to corral the mammal before animal control got there. Seems they had a lot to talk about. Come on, come on, come on. I'm taking you to greener pastures. I don't know what you want to eat, man. Look at this clover right here. Clover is a very calming thing. You ever had clover honey? Clover tea? This is, this is not how I pictured my Tuesday going at all. <laughs> but thanks to the dashboard camera, it went pretty well for the rest of us. Guess the animal was just trying to cop a snack, and maybe the policeman was so patient because he has a bleating heart. Officers are used to pursuing suspects on the land, but this one was really unusual. It required a seemingly careful approach that was right on the mark. I'm Carla Zeus. Keep the thing sheep shaped on CNN.